seems like a lot of people have been coming down with an upset stomach lately. <sighs> I'll need to address that. <laughs> time you were asleep. She seems like she's just a sincere nurse and Paimon didn't notice anything unusual in the room. Are you sure we're not going off track with the infirmary? Whoa! You really are super thorough! All those tiny little suspicious things that Paimon didn't even pick up We've got to give the info to Linny. Did you two run into any trouble over the past few days? No, we just worked our shifts according to the schedule. Nothing weird happened. Hmm, that's good. That means you didn't raise any suspicions when you infiltrated the infirmary. We've taken a look at the slip you've sent. Fremenay successfully left the grounds via the pipes two days ago. And as of last night, Lynette has also infiltrated the infirmary after faking an illness. Wait, why is she getting involved as well? You already went above and beyond when you scoped out the infirmary. To put it more bluntly, even if we were to view that as something you did in exchange for Fremenay's help, you've already done more than enough. Infiltrating a guarded stronghold is a different kind of job from a one-off investigation. We want to avoid using the same faces over and over and reduce the amount of suspicion that will fall on any given person. Lynette also felt like you have already taken the first step for us, so she should be the one to finish the job. So that's what Lynette thinks. Oh, Paimon hopes everything's going well for her. Then, let's go check on Lynette before Fremenay returns. If everything went well, then she should be wrapping up her investigation right about now. Is now really a good time to go over? According to my observations, Sijuin always spends around half an hour away from the infirmary right before lunch. Lynette knows this as well, so this should be a good time to meet up with her. Also, I'm her brother, remember? It's only natural for an older brother to care about his younger sister's well-being. Okay, then let's head over right away! Lynette should be here right now. Huh. Strange. 
Lynette? As expected, Sijuin isn't here, but why isn't Lynette here? No, Lynette rarely deviates from the plan. We agree that if she were to make changes on the fly, she'd find a way to let me know. Unless... Let's see if there are any clues around here. We can look while we wait for her. Who knows? Maybe she'll be back soon. Okay. Ah! This is it! We saw it before! Wait, this thing? It doesn't look like it's been disguised that well. The space behind it is empty. From its size, I don't think it's an entrance that is meant to be taken apart. There's probably a mechanism around here somewhere. Could Lynette have tried to get inside? But if that's the case, she would have contacted me for sure. Hmm. Let's look around here for some more clues. Don't panic, just take another look. None of the beds have any signs of having been slept in, except that one over there. That's the one Lynette must have used, right? You said she was pretending to be sick. Mm-hmm. She would have said her migraine was having a particularly bad flare-up. Generally speaking, the head nurse would then ask her to lie down and rest while she left to retrieve the medication. Which means either the head nurse didn't return the entire time from when Lynette laid down up until she left the bed, or... The nurse intentionally left it this way. <sighs> there are some books here and a few files. They all look like medical records. Hmm. Advanced nursing, how to raise the spirit of your patients, a quick guide to the psychology of emotions, and the meaning of laughter. These sure are some interesting books. Who knew Sijuin would be interested in these kinds of things? She even has books on understanding people's motivations and feelings. Hmm. Is it because she's a melazine? Or does she have a need to understand her patient's emotional state? Hmm. Seems quite normal to me. These are skills that would come in handy for a nurse from time to time. You guys, there's a slip of paper over here! A slip of paper? It's right over here! And there's a bunch written on it, too! It reads, Out of respect for your usual practices, I'll use a piece of paper or card as the medium to pass on my message. You may consider this as me giving you my best regards! This is... Is... is that all? The back! Ah, this... this is... Show me! Now! <laughs> that, that look on your face! P Paimon's reading it now! Would you care to guess where Miss Lynette of the Fatui could be right now? No! Could she have... Is she already... Rithesley... Did he deliberately leave the infirmary unguarded to use it as bait? Wait, you mean... He was aware of our goals from the very beginning? Why? We didn't run into any trouble last time, and he also never reached out to us since! Yes, that is a crucial question. Risley, he doesn't do anything without a clear goal or reason. So this means he had no concerns about your activities from the very beginning. You are not from the same camp as us. You were sent down here by Nervilet, so you have no conflict of interest with Risley. We're a completely different story, though. I'd like to know that, too. Why did he only go after her? <laughs> Don't panic. Just think everything over. I have to stay calm. This is not like what happened last time. The situation's different now. <laughs> Wait, you're right. Wait, but that means... The fact that Fremine was able to leave the grounds... Could Risley have let him go as well? <laughs> so
So he's challenging me and trying to provoke me, I'm sure of it. Ugh. We never should have sent out Fremenet. We had to go through all that trouble to find an opening to sneak him around the guards and into the pipe, and we even thought luck was on our side. If Risley let him leave on purpose, then he's probably in a terrible spot now as well. Lenny's getting more and more panicked. We have to calm him down. Don't be like this, Lenny. Fremenet wouldn't have left if we hadn't told you about Child. That was our fault. No. I'm the leader of this operation, and I'm the one responsible for this team. I was the one who failed to protect them. I'll go talk to Risley. Hey, don't be reckless! Traveler, please talk some sense into him! I simply cannot allow Lynette to be abducted again. I have to go. I'll find a way to get them back! He's rushed out the door! After him! Hmm... Right. I feel like we still have some room to make changes on these details. It's not impossible, but it'll require extensive testing. Is that so? Very well. Then please be mindful of the time. Huh? Is someone? Pack everything up. Whoever's outside is eavesdropping. They'll probably come in once we stop talking. Are you okay? Oh, these two. As expected, they've already found this place. Oh, they are quite sharp. What a delightful turn of events. I like smart people, but I also like playing dumb. I like the feeling of being trusted. Oh my! What's wrong, little one? There's no need to panic. Take a deep breath before you begin. Being able to read human expressions is quite the useful skill. Wait! Wait! It's no use! We have to catch up to him! He's already out of sight! How is he so fast? Let's go head him off at Risley's office! Come out and face me, Risley! Hmm. Aren't we at an administrative office space? Why don't you at least try to follow even a couple rules from the Fortress's indoor management regulations? What did you do to my sister? I ran into the young miss at the infirmary. I'd heard that she was suffering from quite the migraine, so I decided to invite her over for a cup of tea. I do have some teas in my collection that can work wonders against such an illness. Stop joking around! Where did you take my siblings? I have also heard that your performances are quite the spectacle. Miss Lynette would sometimes enter a box filled with water, only to emerge the next second from another place altogether. Maybe she'll appear behind you right now if you were to turn your head. Is he trying to trick me into turning my head? No, he's probably not looking to attack me right now. All of the hostages are in his hands, and he's even in the mood for small talk. That means Lynette is probably still alive. You knew we were investigating the infirmary from the start, so you deliberately aroused the Traveler's suspicions and baited us into continuing our investigation, just so that you'd be able to kidnap Lynette. <sighs> As for Fremenet, no, you probably didn't even interfere with Child's escape. You let him go, so you could purge the Fatui members that we had planted into your ranks. There was no need to do so. The Fortress of Meripede is a pretty pleasant place. Most people enjoy their lives here. The only ones who act differently are those with personal agendas. It was quite easy to identify your colleagues. You removed our original members and spread the news of Child's escape so Father would assign our team to come down and investigate. Fremenet has also fallen into your hands, right? If you're oh so omnipotent and so in control, why would you need hostages? 
One correction. Lynette is in my hands right now, but Fremenet is not. He's not? <sighs> what do you really want? Linny! Oh, wonderful. Everyone is here, so I'll only need to say this once. Thank you so much for cooperating with me. I'm eager and to the point, I see. Alas, only Miss Lynette is currently having a cup of the Fortress's finest tea. Although, as per your original plan, Mr. Fremenet should also have returned to the Fortress by now. But he has neither shown up within my gates, nor has he been taken into any kind of custody. So, where do you think he may be right now? Wait, you can't mean... You locked him outside in the sea? I closed the Fortress's gate to the outside world. That's all. Uh, Fremen is a star diver, so he should be fine, right? No, we're still here, so we definitely try to find a way to come back for us. So we can't assume he might have made a break for the surface. But why would I do this, you may be asking? To have an audience with you, of course. My intel tells me that Mr. Linny is a great magician, so it's only natural for me to want to have some cards of my own when it comes to negotiating. Besides, I do recall you mentioning to Miss Lynette that you've always wanted to have a face-to-face -face meeting with the Lord of the Fortress of Meripede, regardless of whether it was in a personal or a professional capacity. Well, you got your wish. So, you've been keeping tabs on us before we even set foot in the Fortress. Some of my folks just happen to hear a thing or two, that's all. In any case, I will be straight with you. I was willing to play dumb and turn a blind eye, so we had a pleasant few days playing games together here. But once you started focusing on the Forbidden Zone, all of that changed. Mr. Linney, the cards are stacked against you right now. Miss Lynette is in my hands, and Mr. Fremenet is still slowly being pickled out there in the brine. You know just as well as I that he cannot last out there forever. You need do but one thing to guarantee their safety. I would like you to contact your superior, and ideally invite her over for a cup of tea with me. You want to see Father? <laughs> but why should she bother giving you an audience? Well, if she cares for the well-being of her dearest children, she should have plenty of motivation to join me for a parent's evening. I've heard that the bonds between the members of the House of the Hearth are like the bonds of family. I don't see why she would refuse. Why did you think Father sent us to handle the Fortress of Meripede? This place is basically a no-man's land. It wouldn't be fitting for anyone as important as a Harbinger like Father to come here in person. Oh, I see. So it's because she doesn't care for my place here. <sighs> That's such a shame. After all, I've amassed quite the tea collection. I was looking forward to sharing it with her. Both Monsieur Nervillet and Lady Farina have already received many samples as gifts. Was this the extent of your master plan to get to Father? No matter how much pressure you may put on me, I won't allow you to use us to blackmail her. You people really are difficult to get along with. All I'm asking for is a face-to-face -face conversation. Does she truly have no interest in the Fortress's secret? Mr. Linney, you have one last chance to invite your father here. If you refuse... <sighs> Linny! Instead of asking why I'm doing this, why don't you try to see things from my perspective for a second? From the very beginning, the Fatui has been actively infiltrating my fortress. I gave you a warning by cutting off the first few operatives I found, but that only caused you to double down. Had you given up on the fortress then and there, I'd have no reason to want to talk. Mr. Fremenet left the fortress on his own, and Miss Lynette tried to pry out my secrets right in front of me. No matter how you look at it, the responsibility for this falls on you. I... I shouldn't ask Father to do anything because of us. Six. Five. Wait, I... Two. One. Time's up. It really is a shame, Mr. Linney. Risley! Negotiations have broken down. Please leave, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for my afternoon tea. <laughs> If you can't talk 
Delini, can you at least talk to us? You do realize that I'm only letting you go because of Nervalette, yes? You're here helping him out, and I've already done my best to stay out of your way. But that doesn't mean you can just do whatever you want. The fortress may be small and remote, but it still has its own set of laws. Hmm... Then how about this? Those who are capable deserve respect. You've spent quite some time investigating my home turf by now, so why don't you tell me a thing or two about what you found, hmm? I'll ask you three questions. Answer all of them correctly, and I'll agree to your request. Question one. Regarding the hidden rules of the production zone, what is the truth behind the one about not being allowed to work for three days in a row? the infirmary is always empty for the half hour just before lunch. But what could Sijuin be doing during that time? The Fanta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes that only idiots who don't understand the value of coupons would spend them on Fanta. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. Fanta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. But the product has to undergo a trial because even Fanta's own employees have a lot of reservations about it. The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very differently from humans. Because of that, the Melusines have also developed a sense of aesthetics that appear rather strange and alien to humans. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because the Fanta Company sponsored it. Huh. The company must want a return on their investment as well. We often see Miss Sijuin observing the prisoners at work near the production zone. Seems like she can perceive the general state of a person's health just by looking at them. I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the The Fanta promoter has been I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the half hour. Fanta's internal reports the research notes said that the Melusine race According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament The research notes said that the Me The research notes said that the Melusine race perceives the world very I've been told that the infirmary is always The research notes said that the Melusine Ah, so that's what's going on! Paimon understands it now! Who would have guessed? The hidden rule of the production zone. People are not supposed to work three days in a row, and if they do, they'll get strange meat in their welfare meal. At first we thought this strange meat must have something to do with the people who disappeared. But in reality, they were all prepared by Sijuin, the head nurse. She often visits the production zone to observe the workers' health and makes a note of anyone who has worn themselves out after three full days of work. Out of her sense of duty as the head nurse, as well as her genuine concern for the workers' health, Sijuin visits the cafeteria right before lunch and cooks an extra dish for those who can use the stamina boost. Sijuin has only the best intentions with her surprise gift and doesn't want anyone to find out about what she does. However, unfortunately, Melusines as a race perceive the world differently from humans and their sense of aesthetics is even more alien to us. 
the recipients of her lovingly prepared special meals cannot taste the care within and usually just freak out. Are we on the right track? <laughs> Not bad. You've uncovered Si Juin's secret and even guessed her intentions correctly as well. It's nice to know that her efforts have not gone unacknowledged. All right, now for my next question. There are also some hidden rules in the Pancration Ring, including the one that you're not allowed to support both sides of a fight. Why is that? We often see Miss Sijuin obs- Fonta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged product. The Fonta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. Meanwhile, the Duke believes that only idiots who don't understand the value of coupons would spend them on Fonta. The research notes said that the me- According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because The Fonta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place I've been told that the infirmary is always empty for the Fonta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament only took place because- The Fonta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real- Fonta's internal reports suggest that they're start- Fonta's internal reports suggest that there's- The Fonta promoter has been struggling. Fonta's internal report. The Fonta promoter has. The Fonta promoter has been struggling because he doesn't recognize the real value of coupons. We often see Miss Sijuin obs. Fonta's internal reports suggest that they're starting a new trial of an unnamed and unpackaged. According to Collins, the Pancration Tournament. Of. That hidden rule of the pancreation ring is about how, um, people are not supposed to bet on both boxers at the same time. And if they do, they'll receive a package containing a strange blood-colored liquid. People get scared when they see it because they've subconsciously begun to associate it with the missing boxer. But really, it's just a bottle of the latest yet-to-be-named and packaged new Fonta trial product. A blood-red drink. It's no wonder even Fonta's own staff were questioning the company's decision-making. The company, facing backlash from its own staff, decided to try to trial the product on a smaller scale to see how it might be received by customers. They came to the Fortress of Meropede and offered to sponsor the Pancration Tournament so they could push their new product. But the Duke completely refused to even entertain the idea. The Duke, knowing how valuable coupons are in the fortress, knew that only total idiots who didn't understand their true value would bother buying a Fanta product here. And so, only those who proved their stupidity by being dumb enough to bet on two opposing sides of the same match were selected to receive the drinks. I acknowledge the effort you've put into bringing the truth of this mystery to light. Although, based on your description, that Fanta promoter is a bit too careless with his words, I may just reconsider my collaboration with the company. All right, and here's the final question. What's the secret behind our head nurse and all of her patients in the infirmary? Stop your cruel and pointless games, Risley! You know that we haven't finished our investigation, so there's no way we can answer the last question. The thought of sparing Lynette and Fremenet never even crossed your mind! 
You'll pay for this? <laughs> ah! Lenny, are you all right? Oh, <laughs> close one. I owe you, Sijuin. That was a fantastic shot. It was nothing, Your Grace. Sijuin? Though this gun may look like a toy, it's actually fully functional, as I just demonstrated. Sijuin... You... Not at all. I am merely a resident of the fortress, and thus protecting it is my duty. When Monsieur Nervulet asked me to come here, he told me that my job would be to take care of the well-being of everyone here. I am merely discharging my duties. But if you mean what you just said, then isn't Linny someone you should be looking after as well? Isn't he a resident here just like the rest of us? But I really am just doing what Monsieur Nervulet told me to do. Everything I did, I've done to protect them. Had I not, they would be in far more dire straits right now. His Grace knows it too, right? Your Grace? Mind proving my innocence to them? <sighs> my dear Sijuin, whatever shall I do with you? Would it have killed you to just wait another minute or two? Well, it's nearly time after all. <sighs> the way you do things can be truly frustrating sometimes, Your Grace. I figured I should try to talk some sense into you. What are you talking about? What time? Take me if you want. But let them go. Mm-hmm, how touching. Can you just give me one more minute? Don't be like that, Your Grace. All right, everyone, calm down. Two more visitors will be arriving any time now. I'll go get a cup of tea. Miss Sijuin, I leave Miss Lynette in your care. You... What are you doing? I believe I hear footsteps. Some space, please. Ah, Miss Clorand. My door. Fremenet. To... Fremenet. What's going on? What is Clorand doing here? Work. I'm sorry about shooting you, Mr. Linney. The tranquilizing effect will begin to wear off soon. Please take it easy in the meantime, though. What happened to Fremenet? Wasn't he diving just outside of the fortress? Why is he looking like... like this? A flushed face, an accelerated pulse. He must have consumed primordial seawater. What did you say? Uh, please, make some space. I'll need to give Mr. Fremini a more thorough checkup. Your Grace, I'll leave the rest to you. I'll talk to Clorand while you get Fremini to where he needs to be. Everything else can wait. What's that look on your face? I thought I made good time on the way back. Oh, I'm just admiring your punctuality. Had you arrived just a few minutes later, Sijuin may have been forced to shoot Mr. Linney again. How's the situation out there? The water has changed. It's pretty much as expected. The concentration of primordial seawater has increased significantly. I was only out there a short time, so it wasn't too bad. But if one were to stay for any significant amount of time... Well, you can see how that boy is doing. Where was he when you found him? The abandoned zone at the end of the pipes. A good distance into the water. Closer than I thought. He must have recognized it early on and tried desperately to swim back. Locking the door was necessary. I don't think we could have saved two. Well, I did try to convince them that I had my reasons. Never seems to work, though. It would probably work on Nouvellet. He has a knack for picking out who had good intentions, even when the outcomes were all terrible. Uh, it's a bad sign if you're having to plead your case to Nouvellet. Want some tea? Mm, not particularly. If you want to drink some that badly, just say so. Fine, I'd like to get some tea. Want me to get you a cup too, since I've already made it? Uh, might as well then, I suppose. Actually, do you have a towel? I would like to dry my hair. 
How is he? These symptoms are probably caused by an acute ingestion of a large amount of primordial seawater. Still, his condition is not critical. Of course, it would be best if he stayed for further observation. Let's leave him here for now, and move him to the infirmary once he's recovered a bit more. Uh, sorry. I am aware that the infirmary may not be your favorite place in the world at the moment. We do only have a single clinic in the fortress, however. <sighs> Why would he ingest a large amount of primordial seawater after leaving the fortress? How could that possibly happen? Please, look after Mr. Fremenet for the moment. I'll go fetch some medicine and a respirator. Oh, I'll bring Miss Lynette back with me. Where is she? How is she right now? Oh, she just took a nap in an empty room after I tranquilized her. If my calculations are correct, she should also be waking up right around now. You might not believe me, but His Grace and I actually made some snacks and tea for her. Winnie, are you okay? I'll be fine. They're all here now. Don't worry about me. Are you sure? You don't look alright. My hands and feet are still a bit weak, but... That's probably just the residual effects of the tranquilizer shot. I'm back, everyone. Lenny! Oh, Traveler, Paimon, you're here too. Fremenet? Is he... He'll be fine, but for now, please help me lift him up. <gasps> His breathing's beginning to slow down. Give me a hand and help me get him to the infirmary. Yeah, I'll take him from this side. Lynette? Together? On it. Traveler, you seem pretty worried about him. Want to come with us? The Duke and Clarand are gone. They probably went to get some tea. Huh, the Duke will explain the truth in just a bit. Miss Cloran will need a break, since she only just returned from rescuing Fremenet out of the sea. He 
he's awake. Fremenet, how do you feel? <sighs> Lenny... Lynette... We're all here. Uh, where... am I? The infirmary at the Fortress of Meripede, Mr. Fremenet. And you are no longer in any danger. How do you feel? Don't push yourself if you're not feeling up to it. Uh, Traveler... Paimon... It's been so long. Uh, the sea! There's something wrong with the seawater. Shh, it's okay. We can talk about it after you've recovered. No, listen to me. This is really serious. There's primordial seawater mixed into the regular seawater. I don't know why it's there, but no one should touch it. Pipes... Uh... Right, the pipes. It's all coming back to me now. I'm in. Hmm. Seems like this pipe hasn't been used in a long time. It looks abandoned. Hmm. Where could Master Child be? mechanism looks like it's been tampered with. Could he have done it? Seems like I'll have to avoid those obstacles while I turn it. This is where the water starts. Okay. Master Child probably dived into the water. I'll go take a look as well. Vegetation here is a bit more sparse. These traces aren't natural. A person must have left them. And recent. Oh, there are traces here too. I need to keep going. Huh? The traces are gone. But I don't see where he could have gone from here. Ah! 
Wait. What the? My heart is racing, and it's getting harder and harder to breathe. What's going on? No good. I have to get back. They still don't know anything about what's going on. If I turn back right now, I should still be able to make it. Worse and worse, and I'm still underwater. I have to push on. Hmm. So, in other words, the trail you were following vanished, and you had no idea where Master Child could have gone, but there was also no obvious place for him to have disappeared to. Mm-hmm. That's right. I tried my best to swim back, but I had already put some distance between myself and the fortress, and I just couldn't find the strength to keep going. I probably passed out some time after that, and you know the rest. Miss Clarand brought you back, but we also don't know why she just suddenly appeared at the fortress, or why she went out to save you. Miss Clarand, you say? I must go thank her in person. You're still too weak from an A. You can go after you've had some more rest. Miss Lynette is right. I believe Miss Clarand will stay here as a guest for another few days, so there's no need to hurry. A guest? Then I can assume Risley was the one who invited her to come down here? You should ask His Grace about that. He'll be able to explain better than me. Yeah, it's about time he actually told us what's going on. Wanna come with us, Liddy? Uh... No, please go on without me. I don't want to leave just yet. Lenny... The logical part of my brain is aware that we're safe right now, but I still can't bring myself to leave. Both of you are just in danger. Mm. Understood. Then, let's just sit together for a while. In that case, I'll leave the infirmary to you. The Traveler and I are going to head out for now. As long as you stay in here, I don't think you'll be disturbed. Thank you. <laughs> 